There are a number of camera animation schools of thought out there that subscribe to the view that it's a good idea to use null object layers to control the camera. Now, I don't necessarily go along with all those ideas. I think there are a couple of ideas within there that are worth examining. So I'm going to show you two null object camera control ideas in this lesson. So go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and open up 1804 Animation Null. Okay, once again, we're going to animate around this scene, and we're going to do two techniques here. One is called an orbit null. So let's make a new camera by right-clicking here, New Camera. Take the previous defaults that we've been doing, two node, 50 millimeters, no depth of field. Okay. What I want to do is I want to rotate this camera around this entire scene. And to do that with the selection tool or the unified camera tool or some combination of the above is pretty tricky. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to take a camera and rotate it around a scene, that's when the orbit null tool comes into play. And it's used so commonly that there is now a shortcut to create one inside After Effects instead of doing it manually. So just right click on the camera layer and select camera, create orbit null. There you go. And now you've created it. There's the null object layer. There's the camera. And if you right click here and say columns parent, you'll see that this camera is parented now to the null object layer, just like that automatically. So to make this thing work right, we want to have the null object layer kind of be in the center of the scene. And I know this boy is about 4,000 pixels back from the front, and he's about, what, 9,000 pixels? Let's take a look and see. Boy and dog. We'll just click on him and go P for position. See that he's about 9,000 pixels back. I want to put the null object layer right around 4,500 pixels back, so it's toward the center. So I click on this and press P for position. I'm going to type in about 4,500 here for this. Now that null object layer will be back where it belongs. Notice it carried the camera back with it because it's connected to the camera. So how do we pull the camera back? Well, this may seem counterintuitive, but you increase the null object layer's scale. Okay, you could use the camera and kind of pull it back that way, but it's much easier to use the null object layer's scale. So click on null, press Shift S to add scale there. And we want to increase the scale. Now I'm going to do this and you're going to see what happens, but let me explain what's going on here. If you think that this camera is at the end of a long pole pointing into the scene, and the null object layer is some invisible cameraman holding onto that pole, then you get a sense of how this works. The camera is being controlled from deep inside the scene, but it's out here at the end of a stick, and it's going to be swinging around the entire scene. So now I want to open up rotation for the null object layer. So I go Shift R for rotation. And of course, we get X, Y, and Z. We want to rotate around the Y axis, the vertical axis. So I'm going to put keyframes on for Y, going a little ways here. And we'll, let's say, rotate it twice. So I'll go 2 here for 2x to rotate it twice and click away. And I press Home to go to the beginning. And now we're going to rotate around the entire scene. We're going to take the camera and whip it around the outside of the scene here. So here we go. We're whipping around the scene. Notice how it all centered up around the analogic layer there? As if it were on a long, invisible stick. And that's how that works. And as you go along here, of course, if you want to take your camera tool, and then change its Y value, lift it up, bring it down, whatever you can animate that separately from the spinning null object layer. So that's one use of a null object layer when you're working with the camera. I'm going to get rid of that though now by selecting it and pressing delete. There's one other use for the null object layer and that is to connect a null object layer to the point of interest because the point of interest is hard to see sometimes because it blends in with all the other keyframes and it's the same color as the camera track. So I'm going to open up the camera just to show you that, and I'll go over here to two views like this. And I'll just click on the camera so you can see it here. And there's that little purple line. If I zoom out a bit by going control hyphen there, let's click on the camera again. And boy, the point of interest is way up there because that's the last place we used it. So sometimes if it's, let's say, moved someplace else, if we got it down here and it's tucked away inside the camera, let's say you're near one of these points, it's kind of hard to pick it out sometimes from all the various keyframes as you make a track. So to simplify that, you can create a null object layer and then use an expression to connect the camera point of interest to that null object layer. So I'm going to right click here and say new null object. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to connect the camera point of interest to the null object layer's position. So the first order of business is that I want the null object layer to be at the exact position of the current point of interest. It's important to do that. It's, it's best to get that thing connected to exactly where the point of interest is now so it's more intuitive later. So I'm going to open up point of interest for the camera by going A, which is anchor point normally, but here it's point of interest. And just click on this and go Control or Command C to copy it. 
I'm going to go to the null object layer and open up its position by pressing P. I'm going to click on that and go Control or Command V to paste it. But it won't work because this is not 3D yet. It's only two dimensions there. So click on 3D like that. And now I'll go Control or Command V and that'll give the exact same figures to the null object layer. It's now where the point of interest is. So now I'm going to hold on the Alt Adaption key and click on the toggle animation switch to turn on expressions for the point of interest and take that pick whip and drag it up to position there. That'll connect the point of interest to the position. So now you'll have a little red thing there where the point of interest is along with the point of interest. If I click on the null object layer to make it active, you can see it there. If I click on the camera, you see this, but there's still a little bit of a red thing there. So I need to click on the null object layer. Now if I want to move the point of interest now, I just go to X. There it is, and I drag it to the right. Now we're moving point of interest by moving the null object layer. And it just makes it a little bit easier to find it because it's red, it's a different color. Whatever color you've selected for your null object layer, you can always change it to something else if you want to. But nevertheless, there it is. And it's easy to pick that out from the background layer. It's probably better to use something besides blue since that more or less matches what we've done before. We'll try dark green there now, something like that. In any event, it's easier to track down a null object layer than it is to track down the point of interest. And you also have the added advantage of being able to control the point of interest from within the comp panel now too. So there you have it, two ways to use null object layers to control the camera.